The Bible says in verse 10 of Zechariah chapter number 4, For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. God asking that your will be done. I pray, God, you'd speak to hearts, encourage your people, and Lord, we'll give you glory and honor for anything that may be done in this service. Now, God, I pray, Lord, for each and every person that's here. I thank you, Lord, for... Uh, their attendance, but God, I thank you, Lord, that the Bible says where two or three are gathered together, you'll be in the midst, and Father, we ask you, Lord, to bless and have your way in Jesus' name. For who hath despised a day of small thing? Did you know that God uses little and insignificant uh, things that might be insignificant to you or to me, but God can take uh, something small and use it for his glory and honor because he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end and the Almighty God. And God use, chooses to use uh, what, what, whatever he desires. Hey, if we study the Bible, you can see that when God sets out to, uh, to use something or someone, he gets it done. And uh, just to think about this, uh, there was a little lad uh, over there in John chapter 6 that all he had was five little barley loaves and two small fishes, and God used that little lad. He used his little lad's lunch to bless a multitude uh, over there in John chapter 6, and he uses uh, a little congregation. I've done uh, mentioned that where two or three are gathered together, Jesus said, I'll be in the midst. And I'm glad, praise God, that he can use a day of small things in our lives. And Jesus used a little donkey uh, to ride down through the streets of Jerusalem uh, that had never been ridden before, but God wanted him to use. And listen, however small and insignificant you think you are, don't sell God short because you plus God is a majority anytime, anywhere. God can use you. So like the song that they sang, just keep walking on for the Lord. Keep going on for God and God can use you mightily. And uh, uh, God used a little girl, a little maid uh, over there in uh, First King, Second Kings chapter 5 uh, to tell Naaman how he could be healed of his leprosy. And a little offering, the, the, the widow that gave two mites, Jesus had it in his mind that she had gave more than everybody else because she gave uh, all she had and they were given their abundance. So it didn't matter how little or insignificant that we may think that we are, God can use you for his glory and his honor. Because no man liveth to himself, no man dieth to himself. There's folks that are around your life that's watching you, that you're an influence to, that you're a positive influence to. Because they, I've, I've said this and I believe it, there are people that will follow you to heaven or there are people that will follow you to hell. You have that impact and you don't even realize it. God, uh, God often uses material things to illustrate to us. And down throughout the Bible, he's used some material things to give us spiritual lessons and illustrations in our life. He used a lamb to teach us about Jesus. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And Hosea, he compared Israel to a lily and to an olive tree. John 15, he said, I'm the vine and ye are the branches. But today, I want to kind of have a, another little illustrative message about, I got here a postage stamp. And I want to take some things about this postage stamp and preach to you today that this postage stamp, as little as that is, can illustrate us how we can become a better Christian, a more dedicated Christian, and how we can walk for the Lord for His glory and honor. Hey, you know, there's too much 
uh, glory seeking people in this world today looking for glory for themselves hey I ain't looking for no glory for me but I want to glorify the Lord of glory the one praise God what a day that will be when his face I shall see hallelujah a postage stamp today I want to illustrate the small postage stamp and it does a big mighty and very important job hey listen I tell you what I done one time. I bet you ain't never done this. Probably hadn't. You got enough sense you'd put a postage stamp on a letter. Hey, but I mailed a letter to a preacher down in Sherman, Texas, and uh, realized I had to go meet Sidney Weaver. Uh, he was having. Uh, they was. He was preaching for somebody, I think it was, and I met with him and three or four more other preachers, and I had to run, and I run by the post office, dropped a letter in the mail, didn't even have a stamp on it. Well, I didn't, I, I realized it after the fact. I was wanting to hurry up and get up there to get in on all the stuff that they were talking about at the preachers, you know. Them preachers like to rub elbows with preachers and stuff. Anyway, after I got through with that fellowship up at the restaurant, spiritual fellowship too, buddy, over some mashed potatoes and gravy and all that stuff. Glory to God. Fried chicken. A preacher don't like fried chicken. I'm worried about them. But anyway, I realized after I'd mailed that uh, letter, I said, boy, I didn't put no stamp on that thing. So I called that preacher and I said, right, listen, I've sent you a letter and there might not be no uh, stamp on it. I said, I'm pretty sure I put, put that thing in the mail and didn't even put a stamp on it. He said, well, he said, it'd probably be lost in the mail. And uh, I said, well, if you get it, I want you to let me know. And that rascal called me and he said, I got that letter. Amen. Didn't even have a postage stamp on it. So the next time I wrote him a letter, I sent him two stamps to pay for the one that I got for free. So I wanted to do things right. But anyway, Christians should be like a postage stamp. Hey, listen. Number one, on this stamp, it's got USA. And, a, and it represents a country. You and I, as Christians, we need to represent Jesus Christ we need to represent that country, that heavenly uh, country, praise God, that's waiting on the other side. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, hey, what is it? Abraham, he desired a country. Yeah. Praise God, you and I, we need to desire and represent a country. Yeah. Hey, listen, the Bible says to let your light shine before men that they might see your good works that will glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Praise his holy name. This stamp I have today is an emblem. It says the USA, the United States of America. It shows the United States flag. And hold up the bloodstained banner of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let it shine. Praise God down on the job. When you go in there, don't be ashamed to talk about your heavenly Father. Hey, don't be ashamed to talk about the, the blood that Christ shed upon uh, Calvary's tree for your sins. A lot of things I am ashamed of. I'm ashamed of my past, what I have done. Hey, I've done some things I wouldn't even be about to tell none of you about. Hey, listen, but it's still locked up in this old brain of mine, what little bit I got. But thank God he's forgave me of it all. And I praise the Lord, I'm just glad. But this stamp shows that it has the backing of the United States government. It's got a seal on our USA. Praise the Lord. Listen, we need to represent our country, uh, the heavenly. Philippians uh, uh, 3, uh, verse 26, it says, For our conversation, and every commentary that I've ever read says that that word conversation means citizenship. For our conversation or citizenship is in heaven, for whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse uh, Hebrews 11 and 13, uh, it says uh, concerning the heroes of faith, said 
These all died in the faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, and were, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this way. Hey, this earth is not my home. I'm just passing through. My home is laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And the angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. It says, Hebrews 11, 14, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Whoopee! That little stamp right there represents a country. Praise God, you as a Christian needs to represent a country. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 49 says, and we have, uh, and as we have uh, borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Glory to God, let our light shine before men that they see your good works. See, this stamp has USA, and it's got our flag. But I tell you what I like about it best of all. It's got forever on there. It's one of them forever stamps. Hallelujah, praise God when he does, when God does something, well, the Bible says he does it forever. Whoop, glory to God. Hey, listen, I might get thrown up and kinked up by the devil next week, but praise God, the Bible said forever. Hey, he gives eternal salvation, everlasting life. Hey, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in them should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's pretty good. That's pretty close to forever. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Whoo, hallelujah. That's pretty good, ain't it, Brother Samuel? Glory. Forever stamp. Yes, sir, it don't get outdated. Now, I tell you what I do. Now, they'll go up on the price sometimes of these things. That baby right there, I can keep it 20 years, and it'll be still good. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know how long I'm going to live. My daddy got saved when he was, in, and I think it was 48, 1948. He'll be 102 this October, and he's got it. Hey, this. It ain't going to get outdated. No matter how old you get, it's not going gonna, gonna to last forever. Hey, listen, Psalms 136 and verse 2 says, Oh, give thanks unto God, for his mercy endureth <laughs> forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ecclesiastes 3.14, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything can be taken from it, and God does it that men should fear before him. Hey, be like that stamp. Represent a country. Hey, tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, our heavenly Father is forever. Our heavenly home is forever. Our heavenly Savior is forever. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken from it. Hallelujah, I like that sealed until the day of redemption. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Christians should be like a postage stamp. Uh, the postage stamp not only represents a country, the postage stamp carries a message. Yes. Now listen, sometimes I'll write, brother, uh, I'll send, in fact, I got something somewhere. That's, uh, wait a minute. Look here. That's Brother Lawrence. I got a revival, and I wanted to save it. Now, I'm using the stamp that I was going to put on this, so I'm saving the stamp. I'll give you the stamp after the thing. Oh, wouldn't you put it on here? I was going to bring it myself and let, instead of letting the postman bring it. I wanted to deliver our revival notice September the 30th through October the 4th. Y'all be praying for it. That's what I want you to do. Pray for it. If you can't come, pray, and I'd just soon have your prayers. If you want to come, hallelujah, that's a long ways down there to go to a revival meeting, but praise God. But I do ask you, Lord, to pray. I ask you folks to pray that the Lord would bless. Amen. Now back to where I was before I got sidetracked. The postage stamp carries a message, and it may be a very important message. 
Listen, I've got some important messages in the mail before. That's something I needed to know. But that postage stamp will carry a message. That, uh, uh, the letter or message may be written in a gold ink pen. It might be on some kind of fancy uh, paper. And I mean, you could have it in the fanciest uh, envelope. Now, my sister, her husband was an attorney, and they live over on the high side of town. And she gave me some uh, a letterhead stuff and envelopes, and I'm pretty fancy-looking stuff. <laughs> but it don't matter if it's what kind of, it carries that message. Right. It doesn't matter. Hey, God's no respecter of persons. I don't care if you live over on the high side of town or whether you live down in the ghetto or wherever you, or anywhere in between. Hey, God, well, he, he, he's, he loves every one of us. From the highest of the highest to the lowest of the low. Hey, he sees, he sees somebody that he loves. Now, but the postage, this stamp, uh, is carries, it's got the authorization to carry that message to wherever it goes. You and I need to carry a message for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right here's the message. It's called the gospel of Christ. We can carry that message. We can help others carry that message uh, and to a die lost and dying world. And it doesn't matter to that stamp what it's stuck on. It's going to get It's going to get there. Hey, it can be just a, uh, just a little, I've seen people take a, a piece of notebook paper and, and, and fold it over and put some tape on it and put the address and stamp on that and it'll get there. But look here. The Bible is a message that Christians should carry to deliver to a lost and dying world. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. He said, lo, and I'll be with you even unto the end. See, the stamp authorizes the delivery. It's paid for by the sender. Woo! Hallelujah. Hey, the gospel is the message. And it's paid for by the sender. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, I bought that stamp and I was going to stick it on this. But I said, I'll just take it myself. I paid for it. Jesus Christ paid for the message. And he paid for your sins. And he wants you to deliver that. So Christians needs to be like a postage stamp. Christians. Jesus, hey, he's authorized it by his own blood. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain uh, conversation received by the tradition of your father, but with the precious blood as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Hallelujah. Christians should be like a postage stamp, represent a country. They should be like a postage stamp and carry a message. And Christians should be like a, a postage stamp number three and be ready for service. Now that little old baby right there is ready to, ready to go. It's just waiting on me. And uh, Christians need to be ready to go. I mean, standing on ready. Hey, listen, 1 Peter 3.15 tells us, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. Uh, you must, uh, with, uh, with meekness and with fear. So, hey, listen, John the Baptist is, uh, I mean, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, in John, the mother of Jesus told the, the disciples, Whatever he tells you to do, do it. You just do it. And that's why we, you and I ought to need. Hey, let God, let, let God lead us. And let him stick us from wherever he needs. Send us wherever we need to go. Let God send us to do whatever we need to do. But Christians, you and I, needs to be like a postage stamp. Who hath despised the day? 
of small things. You say, well, I can't do nothing. I can't do nothing. Well, you can dial a phone, call someone that God, let God lay your heart on somebody, call them up and say, listen, we've been having a good time over there at the house of God over at Emmanuel Baptist Church. We got a super good pastor and, and a good choir and, uh, and the Holy Ghost meets with. Why don't you come to church Sunday? You know, that might be the very thing that will encourage them to get them here. And listen, let's do that. Hey, God can use you. And before you know it, that person can be invited by them and so on and so forth. And before you know it, you've got several in. They hear the gospel and get saved. And praise God, that little small phone call or that small little old card that you sent them, uh, God blesses it and uses it. Listen, be ready. The stamp goes wherever it's sent. It don't say, I don't want to go there. I'll go over here. I can't, no, no, no. But listen, just be ready for service. And go wherever you're sent. So the Christians should be like a postage stamp, be, uh, represent a country, carry a message, be ready for service. And number four, and stick to its task. Now this thing here's got some stuff. I ain't gonna pull it up because I don't. I'm. I might. I might use this baby later. But you can pull that off. Look, well, I got this one right over here. You see that? It's there, buddy. Hallelujah! But I'm gonna take it off. Put it back on. Hey, it sticks to its task. Hey, do you know that a winner never quits? And a quitter never wins. Stick to it. If God says you to do something, stick to it. Hey, listen, I'm glad I'm glad uh, Noah didn't work for uh, 40 years and say, man, this is too much trouble. I think I'll give it up. Man, I've been working on that church down there, hard work. I, in fact, it's helped me out. Well, you know, work won't hurt you. Work won't hurt you. Hey, listen, I've, I, I, I've been, re I guess, retired, I guess. I, you know, I quit working uh, several years ago uh, doing construction work. I still had all my tools and stuff like that. And I started working on that uh, church and driving nails. My, th my thumb, I revisited my thumb with my hammer. <laughs> Wallop. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, I got saved. It wouldn't have been like that. <laughs> Bam. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> but look here. There's been times that there's been times that I wanted to give that up, Brother Samuel. Man, I've just bit off more than I can chew. But you know what? God's grace is sufficient. I'd get up and still have a desire to get up there and start driving nails. Because I want to make a mark. And I, in other words, my dad has told me, he said, I'd sure before I die, I'd like to see that church standing up there. And it's standing up there with the help of God. And y'all pray, keep praying for me because Lord willing, we'll get that thing finished. And uh, But hey, the stamp sticks to its task. It sticks. And you know, you can start something for the glory. If God tells you to do something, do it. Yes, sir. And until you get direction from God, you need to stay on course, stay stuck to the duty that God's got for you. See, that, once that stamp is stuck to its assigned duty, it's stuck. Wallop. It's on there. And it becomes fixed, dedicated to accomplish its mission. It doesn't turn loose. Now, I'm glad, I am glad of this. I thought about this the other day. I'm glad you don't have to put it across your lip anymore. They got self-adhesion. Talking about the blessings of God. I never did like the taste of that old glue anyway. I mean, you want to put it across your lip. Man, 
Every, every year when I mail out my invitations to uh, uh, our revival, man, I just hold my finger under the spigot and wet them. I don't like the taste of them, uh, them old dried envelopes. You know, get it, Lord. They ought to put a little flavor in there. Put a little beef jerky in there or something. A little garlic and onion flavor. So you can breathe on your wife after you've been licking them old garlic uh, flavored uh, envelopes. And you could walk up to your wife and say, Hi, my name is Harry and I'm from Houston. And she's over there doing this number. Hallelujah. Stick to you. Stick to what God got for you. Amen. Amen. Christians should stick to serving God. You know, the God of this world will blind your mind. There's so much stuff out in this world that'll get you preoccupied. It'll get you as busy as being in a rocking chair rocking all day long. You busy as you can be, but you ain't going nowhere. The internet, the phones, ain't it something? You know, I, a lot of men and their wives, and this is a good thing, they'll have date nights. You know, when they have them date nights, you know what would really be good? You know, if families have family night. And say, hey, let's have family night. And we'll leave our phones at home. Go out. Have a time together. Have fellowship together. Devotion with one another. Stay there for each other. Have a family night. But yet, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, seeking whom he... There's a lot, so many things that'll get you so sidetracked, and you'll become, become dry and unstuck to your mission. You need to hang in there with it. Don't get sidetracked. Don't let the God of this world, the devil, blind your mind to the things of God. Don't become un unglued, if you will, to the Lord. Hang in there for God. Christians should stick to their tasks. There's so many that's in today and gone tomorrow. And they fall through. And all that is, is a, that's, a, that's old Satan. Uh, he's trying to uh, mess with you. Christians should be like a stamp represent its country, carry its message, ready for service, stick to the task. And lastly, they should be like a postage stamp. Even through trials and difficulties, you make it. We're going to make it one day. Yeah, this it's ain't no rose garden that we're in. We're going to make it, Samuel. Hallelujah. Think about this stamp's beginning. First, firstly, it's, it's pressed on there. Pressed. Hard times. Feels pressure. It's pressed onto the envelope. Then throw it in a mailbox with all kinds of other mail. See, we're in this world and we're among all kinds of people. Everybody don't love God. But that envelope is dropped in a mailbox, threw in into a mail bag, a piles of other mail just pressing down on top of it. And it goes through some dark places with no recognition, no praise, taken for granted, and yet it is determined to meet its destination. Second Timothy in 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus, not maybe, but shall suffer persecution. Have you ever just thought about, you know, I just, it'd be good to quit. You know, that's the flesh. Your flesh ain't saved. John 6.63 6, said, It's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profiteth nothing. 
Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and they're life. And sometimes we feel about wanting to quit. But we need to stick to our mission. Right. And even through trials and difficulties, buddy, we're going to make it. And look here. I want to read this to you. You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read it to you. Uh, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded in that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't let the trials get you down. Don't let, hey, the devil's fighting tooth and nail but he's a defeated foe. Amen. Hey, we're on the winning side. We're going to make it. So you represent that country. Hey, you carry its message. Be ready for service and stick to the task. Even though we'll go through trials and tribulations, one of these days, he's going to take us by the hand and lead us down through the pits of glory. Hallelujah! I don't. I don't know. I'll have to. Get, he'll have to pick me up off of my face because I'll be thanking him for salvation, thanking him for saving a wretch like me. You may. You may be say, uh, brother Jerry. Maybe I need to be like that postage stamp. Who hath despised the day of small things? Hey, listen. You're, if you're here today and you think that you're insignificant to the church, you're not. You're not. You are something to God. He died for you and he loves you. And I promise if you've never been saved, if you need to draw closer to God, you can do that right today, praise God. Uh, people will come down to an old-fashioned altar and kneel down and have a little talk with Jesus and you can submit yourself more to him. If you've never been saved, if you want, hey, listen, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then you be become like a postage stamp. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning to your inbox? Head on over to ibcforums.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.